Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we are going to answer that age old question, can you harden a Harbor Freight anvil? And we're gonna do that by actually testing it in this video. And I've got the good help of Thomas, the illustrious hand model. They can't see you, there it is. <laughs> so uh, he's gonna take and help me with getting this anvil in and out of the forge and we are going to attempt to harden it. Now, big disclaimer, don't do the stupid that you're about to witness here on YouTube. Do not do this. Um, I have a theory already of what's going to happen to the anvil when we go in for the quench, and you guys can go ahead and pause the video and drop your theories down in the comment section down below. So, um, but I kind of already have sneaking suspicion of what's going to happen. Also, I have, I will do some comparisons at the end, but I do have a review video where I went over the specs of the anvil and all that other, all that other jazz, its hardness and things like that. So be sure to check out that video. It's linked up in the description down below. So without further ado, let's see what happens. Alrighty, three, two, one, go. All right, back away. Okie doke folks, so it goes without saying, again, do not do this at home. And this thing's gonna take a while to cool. But it didn't explode, so that's a good thing. It didn't explode so far. Okay, everybody, so there it is. It survived the quench uh, to a degree. Um, totally shocked me. That's not the expectations I had for it. My expectation was this thing was gonna completely blow apart. Um, again, don't repeat the things you've seen in this video here. But now we need to go ahead and actually do some testing on this. I have my ball bearing drop test tube. You guys have seen this in other videos. We're going to see if it's got any more rebound. And then we've also got this hardness testing kit, a Rockwell hard hardness tester. Um, this is the Subason brand. No affiliation. They're not a sponsor of the channel or anything other than you can get these over at the link down below in the description over on Amazon. Um, so, uh, yeah. So that's where I bought that one at, was over on Amazon. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the highest Rockwell. We're gonna start with the Subason 65 Rockwell, and we're gonna move down from there and see if we picked up any sort of surface hardness on this thing whatsoever. So let me get down real close. Let's see, hopefully this will be in focus. Go ahead, Thomas. 
Cuts pretty easy. Yep, bite yep. right into it. Okay. Let's go down one. Is it cutting? That looks like it's cutting. It's cutting. Okay, so that was 60 Rockwell. Down to 55. A good anvil should be between 52 and 55 Rockwell. Is that cutting in? Yeah. All right, that's digging really good. So, yeah, you're leaving grooves in it. We'll go to 50 Rockwell. See what we got? You don't have to push down super hard. Just see if it's grabbing. It's grabbing. Very lightly. Very lightly grabbing. It's, it's kind of, it grabs a little bit right here and then skates. Okay. So go, so go back to, go to the next one. So that was the 50 Rockwell. So here is a 45 Rockwell. And that's mostly skating. That's just removing skating fuzz. Yeah, that's skate. Yep. So that's just removing the surface oxide. It's scratching, but... Not a lot. Let's do 40. So this is probably like 40 Rockwell. Or a bit more, maybe 42. Yeah, that's just lightly yeah. doing it. It's removing the it's removing the junk, the forging scale off, but it's not biting. It's just skating on the surface. So it's anywhere from between 40 and 45 Rockwell now uh, in hardness. If you guys remember in the previous video, I'm gonna go down to 45 Rockwell. Again, files just like as if that, that face isn't even there, like you're filing on Play-Doh, and all the way down to 40 Rockwell, and that's where this kit bottoms out. And of course, it still even scratches at 40 Rockwell, so it's definitely below 40 Rockwell uh, on the C scale. Well, so it did harden it to a degree, somewhat. Uh, is it worthwhile doing this? Probably not, but again, that's, you know, I'll save my full opinions until the end of the video. So now let's do the ball bearing drop test on this. We're gonna take this thing up here. I should mention that this ball bearing, this ball bearing we're using is 52100. This is a 52100 uh, ball bearing here. So, um, so we got that set up. So we're gonna get up here, let's see. Go ahead and drop it, Tom's. So it went up to nearly 12 on that one, 12 inches of rebound. So that's nearly half rebound. So I'm gonna come up to the 12 inch mark and we're gonna test it again. That was below, that was like eight, nine inches. And again, we'll have to compare this with the previous and we'll give it the drop test. So as you can see, it has some rebound. Not too bad for a rebound on a cast iron anvil. Three, two, one. Yeah, so that was about 10 inches or so from what I can see on this small screen. So that's the actual rebound of it. Again, this is a two foot long pipe, so roughly Again, not scientific at all. 12 inches would be 50% rebound um, that you would get back. That's not actual math uh, rebound. That's just an observable rebound limit. So let's do it one more time. Three, two, one. So got, depending on the pole, you get nearly 50% rebound on that. So, so there you go. Uh, that's what we got on that. And now, Let's do the, now that we've got the empirical testing away, let's go ahead and do the objective, uh, what is that, objectionable yeah. <laughs> testing. Um, this is just, you know, feeling it yourself. So go ahead and hammer on in the surface and see how that feels, Thomas. Very, very dead. Very, very dead still. And there you go. And that was not that hard. Oh. So is it worth the risk? No. <laughs> no, it is not worth the risk. So, um, so we gained a bit of hardness. We gained a bit of surface hardness with quenching this off. Um, but we had catastrophic failure on the heel. 
Um, my suggestion to anybody, again, I wanted to answer this question. I've had so many newbies ask this, oh, could I just harden my anvil? Um, and you know, my Harbor Freight anvil. And the answer is no. So um, I do know how to heat treat things. I can harden, I can temper things just fine here in the shop. And I've even done um, smaller than this anvils before. If you're just green, you're getting into it, you don't need, you have no business undertaking anything like this uh, because that right there, if you were working on this and it were to fragment out, you could end up catching a shard in your leg, your face, an eye, someone else's eye. Um, and it's just not worth it. It's just not worth the risk and the hassle. Okay, so let's go over some closing thoughts on this. And I know I'm gonna be asked this, well, why didn't you harden an oil? Well, one, hardening an oil is a very, very dangerous situation to harden that big of a mass of steel into oil. Plus, I don't have that much oil on hand to be able to try to harden this anvil. You would not wanna to try to do anything near that big in something like a five gallon bucket of oil. You're gonna need a very large heat treating setup in order to quench an oil. That's why we chose water instead. Yes, it's a harsher quench medium, but it is also safe, relatively. Um, you know, that being said, that anvil could have still blew apart right in the quench, and that is a, that's a whole other set of dangers in of itself. Uh, the other thing to mention about this, this is like a ductile anvil. It's not a ductile iron anvil, it's a cast iron anvil. So if you think of a cast iron anvil like a cast iron pan, if you've ever had a fry pan blow up on you before, which I've had, where you know you were just done cooking with it, maybe you set it in the sink and it cooled too quickly and it going pop and it, you know, shatter the pan on you. That's what you're dealing with with the Harbor Freight anvils. They are not cast steel. They are not a quality item. They're not a quality anvil. They are just meant to be beat on. They're soft. You can beat the living daylights on the top of them and eventually they will fail on you. Um, as you can see, the casting grain on this bad boy is like huge. I mean, the grain structure in that thing, it's like popcorn. So um, it's not a fine grain casting. It is not a good, it's not a good quality anvil and it wasn't meant to be. Uh, meant to be that. So final thoughts. Should you do it? No. <laughs> no, and I'll say that again, no. Don't do it in oil. Don't do it in water. Don't do it in brine. Get it out of your head. It's not worth the risk for the marginal bump in surface hardness that you're going to get. Like I said, we were below the scale, below 40 Rockwell, when we tested it out before, and now here we are about 42 to 45 Rockwell. It's not worth it. Um, and then as you can see, we cracked off the heel too as well. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe. If you wanna see more videos like this, thank you to all the channel members who make the content on this channel possible. Thank you to Thomas Goody Moot for the hands <laughs> and, and the extra help there uh, on this little project. Comment down below what you'd like to see me test next and the anvil varieties and things like that. Would love to would love to do that. And uh, as always, God bless each and every last one of you, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks so much.